The Ansefu pride is the perfect lion family. New cubs with two devoted mothers. Two loyal fathers to guard them. But they've got teenagers. And that spells trouble. Turning from cubs into killers isn't easy. They must learn how to hunt and how to find their independence while staying loyal to their family. Teenage mistakes can have terrible consequences. They face betrayal, isolation, and death. Theirs is a journey into adulthood through the trials and tribulations of teenage pride. It's dawn, and the Ansefu pride relaxes after a busy night's hunting. The Ansefu lions are led by two dominant males in their prime. At the heart of the pride are five adult females and six new cubs born to two litters. Everyone dotes on the new arrivals. Everyone, except the teenagers. They have their own problems. There are seven of them, ranging from one to three years old, mostly sub-adult males. Like all teenagers, they face the difficult transition to maturity. But these adolescents are lucky. Their 25 square mile territory is on the Luangwa River, the best lion real estate in the area. Born eight weeks ago, the new cubs are now old enough to hang out with the pride and even the two big males spend time with them. The previous year's young are all ignored, so they formed a gang. These adolescents are, in human terms, of school age. They have their own teacher, an older sister. Though already adult size, she's still young and playful. Life was perfect until the six new cubs came along and stole the show. The mothers have their hands full now and pay little attention to their older offspring. Aunts and a grandmother are increasingly losing patience. Of the seven teenagers, four are male, now with the first sign of manes. Three of these are brothers. In their few years left with the pride, they have a lot to learn. Their big sister, their teacher, make sure they keep up. There's a lot of land for dozy adolescents to get lost in. Now it's time to join the pride for breakfast. The hungry teenagers are allowed at meals as long as they join the back of the queue. The new cubs are treated like royalty and even steal the big male's meals. The mothers need extra food to make milk for the cubs. The males are grumpy about having to share. One antelope, stolen from a leopard, 
doesn't go far. The aunts try to eat their share discreetly until the teenage gang finds them and forgets their manners. The hungry youngsters often break the rules of the pride. The big males send the adolescents packing. The most important survival skill the youngsters can learn is to hunt, and it's time for class. The pride's favorite food is buffalo. The thousand-strong herd comes to the river most days to drink. But each is half a ton of power, with lion-killing horns and hooves. The elder sister, their teacher, selects a safer target for demonstration. Hunting needs more work. The three brothers are 18 months old and will be allowed to stay with the pride for maybe two years more. But then, they'll be on their own. Hippos retreat to the river by day, but come on land at night to graze. Baby hippos are a regular meal, but adults are huge, much bigger than buffalo, with 12-inch long teeth and bad tempers. This morning, the teenage gang has one trapped and is blocking its route back to the river. Potential predator and potential prey fight a battle of wills. the young lions try intimidation, while the hippo slinks off round the back. of brightly colored birds distracts the hungry teens. A colony of carmine bee-eaters nests in the river bank. Their burrows extend six feet or more into the soft sand. Lions aren't born knowing what's best to eat and whether these birds might make a meal. The years spent learning how to be a lion may be the most difficult and least understood of a lion's life. Lions are meant to be nocturnal, active at night. But they're teenagers. The hippos are braving the land to feed.
they graze and eat fallen fruit through the night. For hungry lions, three tons of slow-moving meat is just asking for trouble. This time, if they work together, so many lions should be able to take on one hippo. Yet the hippo is more intimidating than they are. The hippo's sheer bulk is their protection, as are their massive teeth, trampling feet, and belligerent courage. Teenage lions have attitude too, and they spar with the hippos, like matadors with bulls. For the lions, it's part game and part lesson. Experienced lions rarely hunt adult hippos. They're too dangerous, but the teenagers keep trying. They'll eventually learn to look for calves or injured adults, which are easier prey. After taunting the hippos, the big sister leads the class inland. Hunting antelope requires specialist teamwork, and they practice most nights. They spread out. The idea is to drive an impala or a puku into an ambush. Antelope are faster than lions, and they work together too, alarm calling. It's time for the teens to test their strategy. Lions assign themselves different jobs in the hunt. Some become wingers, left or right. Others, part of the charge or the ambush. Once a lion learns its job, it'll eventually fulfill that role in each hunt for the rest of its life. These teenagers are working out what their jobs are. The three brothers coordinate well, but they've not caught anything yet. The elder sister drives Apuku straight towards them. But they miss the ambush. Behind the younger brother, there's one of the cubs, lost and alone. Terrified, there are leopards and hyenas around, and he latches on to the teenagers. They stop hunting. The rest of the pride can't be far away. But the cub's older siblings may not give him the safety he seeks. Teenagers play rough. There's still resentment towards the cubs. Jealousies within a family are normal. Before the cubs came along, life was better. And now they wait at the back of the queue. Adolescents have many conflicting instincts. They recognize their little brother. He's one of the family. But lion males are cub killers, an instinct needed for when they take over a pride.
just as the game looks like being the cub's last, his mother appears. The teenagers want their plaything back. The cub is battered, confused, and lucky to be alive. Reprimanded, the adolescent gang heads back to the pride. There's a rumbling, like distant thunder. Stampeding buffalo. The professional hunters, the lionesses, are at work. It's a big opportunity for the teenagers to prove themselves. The strategy for hunting buffalo is different to antelope. Buffalo are like tanks, well armored. The lions must attack from behind. Buffalo is strong and can wheel around, slashing with his horns, lashing out with his hooves. He tramples and kicks one of the yearlings. The pride closes in but the teenagers aren't strong enough. A horn catches the elder sister in the groin. The lion's desperate attempts to hang on to the buffalo become increasingly dangerous and futile. One by one, the lions peel off. Teeth and claws aren't enough. It takes experience as well as courage and knowing when to back down. Rumps bleeding, but heads held high. The buffalo head back to their herd. Following them, unwilling to give up, are the three brothers. The rest of the pride leaves them to it. The three brothers follow the buffalo herd all night out of the pride's territory. But after a few hours, they've lost the buffalo and their pride.
The bride's two dominant males return from defending their kingdom to find their family depleted and injured. The mothers are fine. They backed off early in the hunt. Four juveniles are missing, three brothers and a yearling. One of the other adolescents' leg is bleeding. Injuries are common. One of the adult males has even cut his eye, but that's minor. But his daughter, the teenager's elder sister and teacher, is badly hurt. It's her left hind leg. She's fortunate to have the pride. Solitary cats, like leopards, starve when they can't hunt. Most wounds heal quickly. There's no blood, and she'll probably recover with a few days rest. But the trampled yearling is not so lucky. A moment of teenage bravado has caused fatal internal injuries. Courage alone is no match for a half ton of buffalo. The knight's injury list grows longer. The lost and found cub can barely walk. The teenagers were rough. He looks for comfort from his mother, but she rejects him. The pride can't look after a cub that isn't able to keep up. Her instinct is harsh, but it's for the sake of the other healthy cubs. One night of teenage havoc has devastated the whole pride. The two adult males don't stick around to help. They often split up to patrol their borders and cover more territory. It's the height of the dry season and each lion pride controls sections of a few miles of river, the only water around. The lions hardly ever venture out of their territory in case they meet their rival neighbors. Yet, on this morning, beyond the pride boundary, are the three teenage brothers on their own for the first time. At 18 months old, they are too young to leave the pride. Yet the instincts for independence are stirring. They head out in search of breakfast. They have a swagger, a confidence. This is the beginning of a great adventure. One is the born leader, and he keeps an eye on the other two. He waits for them.
The hippo carcass is days old and thin pickings. The leader lets the younger two find what they can. A foot doesn't have much meat, just skin and gristle. They should be careful. Their stomachs aren't accustomed to rotting carcasses. But it's something they may need to get used to. Like many teenage boys, they're prone to fighting. But sibling rivalry could tear the coalition apart, and they must learn to support each other. Their survival is at stake. The leader just moves on, and they have to follow. It's October, and South Luangwa National Park is waiting for the rains. These 3,000 square miles of wilderness have been eaten bare. The grass has gone. This is now a land of hunger. All life is concentrated along the banks of the dwindling Luangwa River. Drawn by the only water, a lone lioness, a nomad. Life without a pride is harsh. Single lions can scrape by for years, eking out an existence, hiding and starving. Rainstorms are on their way. But for this nomad, it's probably too late. The three brothers are tense, staring intently. A few hundred yards away is a small pride of lions, their neighbors. This family looks different, battle-scarred. Their life is tougher. There are two adult females and several older adolescents like the brothers. This is a hardened pride from the wrong end of town. But that's not what the brothers are staring at. There's a familiar face here. their own father. One of the two Insefu Pride males has a second family across the tracks. It's unusual, but here the park has a shortage of adult males due to trophy hunting outside the reserve. As the brothers watch, he greets the other pride's adolescents, 
He's clearly their father too. They are a little older than the three brothers. This must have been going on for years. Cuts and scars tell of a hard life. Small prides do less well, pushed into lower grade areas. The three brothers from Nsefu remain still until all the other lions have left. Confused, their confidence gone, they nuzzle for reassurance. One of the brothers isn't feeling at all well. Maybe it's the effect of the rotten hippo. But in many animals, emotional upset can have the same results too. Juveniles rarely roar, but when they do, it's often full of meaning about their pride, their alliances, and strengths. It's about who they are. They are three teenage runaways, adventurers, figuring out how the world works on their own. A few days later, the big male returns to the Ensefu pride, as if nothing's wrong. This is his main family. We can't know what he thinks and feels, nor understand a lion's guilty secrets. But scientists say that many animals deceive each other and hide the truth from their rivals or mates. It's a very ancient betrayal. The cubs are all there, including the one that was rejected. He's fine now, just a bit smaller than the rest. His mother finally relented. Ignored in the past by his mother and brothers, the lucky survivor is forging a special relationship with his father. Five of the cubs are male and could form a formidable team in two or three years, eventually becoming caring fathers themselves. The falling river shrinks the hippo pools. The territorial males aren't happy with their newly confined quarters. If the dominant hippo doesn't get you, the crocs may. Injuries are inevitable. Under cover of darkness, a wounded hippo retreats to the bank. With luck, darkness and dense bush would hide him. But he comes face to face with the Insefu mothers 
and doesn't stand a chance. The big male takes charge of the feast. An adult hippo is a huge meal, more than enough for them all. Yet, there's an unusual tension. A big croc tries to join them. It's too dangerous, even for him. By morning, the cause of the aggression becomes clear. Here, with their father, are two adolescents from the pride next door. The Ensefu mothers are the most upset. The male has turned up with the wrong teenagers. He's brought two illegitimate adolescents instead, expecting them to be fed. It's like the most awkward Thanksgiving dinner. The uninvited guests are tough, with no manners. They don't know teenagers should join the back of the queue and not talk back. The mother's building anger becomes more evident. The two intruding adolescents are outnumbered and in serious danger. They have to leave right now. The Ensefu mothers follow, looking intent on revenge. The teenagers turn on a mother All five Insefu females arrive. The big male tries to contain things and is turned on. He puts himself between the mothers and the two interlopers. Then, in a display of rightful bloodline, the teenagers nuzzle their father farewell. The two exit the only way they can, through the crocodiles. The crossing is the fastest escape route, but it terrifies the teenagers. They've met their father's main family. Maybe they too thought they were the only ones. It seems 
everyone's feelings are hurt. Careful mothers are still spoiling for a fight. The neighboring adolescents return home unharmed and well fed. The Nsefu pride is fractured by hostility and betrayal. The growing tension extends beyond the lion pride. Other animals become desperate in the final days of the dry season. Once the rains come, the antelope can drink anywhere and move away from the river in the hope of better grass. The lions must now search further afield for their food. In these tough times, they can't wait for the three missing teenagers to come back. The young cubs have no choice but to try and keep up. The buffalo head out beyond the pride's boundary. Far from bringing life, the storms empty the lion's world. The territory is a deserted sea of mud. The hippos, at least, are happy. It takes a few weeks, but life returns. Grass grows and the fresh flush is richest around the river. The antelope return. Mud, churned by buffalo and baked dry, transforms into lush lagoons. For the cubs, it's a new world. They've only known dusty plains. The little cub, injured by the teenagers, is now hard to tell apart from his brothers. The big males are spending more time protecting their youngest heirs. Others join with the males in roaring to proclaim their pride. The only ones missing are the three brothers. They haven't seen them since the buffalo hunt. Then, one day, one appears.
following him, the other two. They are back, looking surprisingly well. They are welcomed as part of the family. The whole pride is together again. The three brothers have learned a lot on their adventure and are ready for their next chapter. It's a new season, a new beginning for all the lions of the Yensefu Pride.